As I reflect on my life, I realize there are a lot of things that I've done that other people might consider reckless or stupid or ill-advised. But as I go back and I reflect on those times when I took those actions that others frown upon, I remember the intensity of emotion and the experience that I had. I remember after a long night of drinking, the next morning finding myself in a little bit of a hungover haze in this tiny little airplane that had to be at least 10 or 15 years older than me, rumbling down this gravel runway. I've got a parachute strapped to my back. All my friends are in there with me, with this female jump master. And we are getting ready to jump out of this damn plane. I vaguely remember there was a bet or a dare, a game of quarters. It was one of those ill-advised agreements taken with a lot of alcohol. So there we are in this plane, all of us looking a little pale, as you might imagine. And uh, we've got this very attractive jump master. And she is being really quiet until the plane gets off the ground. We get up to a few hundred feet and she turns to us and she says, there's only one way you get out of this plane. And that's while we're in the air and it's through that door. And if you don't go, I am going to force you out. It's like, oh shit. She wasn't that big. And I'm sure any one of us could have taken her. But just the thought of this cute little jump master kicking us out of the plane, the humiliation of that was enough to make any one of us jump. And so we did. The way we had to jump out of this plane, it was like a little um, Cessna kind of plane. Is It has uh, you know, the, the wings that go over the top. And you had to hang on to the strut before you were able to, to jump. Come on, guys. So you had to climb out onto the wheel. There was like a block of wood on it. And then you had to uh, grab the strut, hang from the strut, and then drop from the strut. So it was, it was a little sketchy, you know? But man, it was the most amazing experience ever. The adrenaline was pumping. Um, when that parachute finally opened, you <laughs> felt so good. Oh man. It was one of those uh, highlights of your life moments, you know? And we ended up doing it like two or three more times. You know, we, had, we kept going back and doing it again and again because we enjoyed it so much. It was expensive though. So as kids, we didn't have a ton of money. I think I was like, 18 years old when we did that, 19 years old. So uh, if I tell that story to some people and say, wow, you were really reckless. That was really ill-advised. You know, being hungover and jumping out of an airplane is not a good idea. Hell, jumping out of an airplane may not be a good idea for a lot of people. I get it, but uh, I wouldn't take it back, not for the world. I have a really great friend who played Division I football for a, for a, a university here in Virginia. And uh, he was a good player, excellent player. Probably the best guy on his uh, high school football team. Um, had a partial scholarship, played linebacker, did a, uh, you know, played against all the big teams. Loved it. He was the high motor guy. He was the kind of guy that, uh, you know, the announcers all compliment about what a great athlete he is and, what a great, uh, great motor he has. Just goes from whistle to whistle, you know? Anyway, he uh, suffered some pretty significant injuries. He's now almost 70 years old. And uh, he has suffered with those injuries his entire life. They have shaped his life physically in significant ways. But when I talk to him about his experience playing football, he lights up. 
It was, without question, the highlight of his life. And it shaped everything that happened to him after that. And he became quite successful, quite wealthy, you know, had a great life. But um, a lot of people would say, you know, playing football, especially at that level where the risk of injury is high, it's ill-advised, not, not, uh, not worth it, too much of a risk. And most reasonable people would agree. But then again, it's not reasonable people who live life intensely. It's not reasonable people who reach beyond what is conventionally thought as possible. It's the exceptional people. It's people who hold themselves to a higher standard, who want to live life, not sit in the stands. People who want to engage with this experience and make the most of it. The reason I'm ranting about this is because I know there's a lot of young guys that watch this channel. And I know that sitting around listening to a bunch of old guys, you know, talk about their frustrations and anger and their experiences with, you know, marriage can be um, a real obstacle. It can be a, a great excuse for not getting involved yourself. You can say, hey, this whole institution is just trash. I'm not going to get involved. Well, you got to watch out because that's kind of a cop out. You know, I think for older guys, like you can be a man that goes his own way. You know, if you've been in the game, you've gotten your ass kicked, you've got your ass handed to you, whatever, you want to step aside, you won't want to be involved anymore. You, you do that. You've earned the right. You know, that's your life. You can choose that. But for a young guy who's never been in the game, because the game is hard. There's no question about it. I mean, approaching women and getting dates and, um, you know, that whole, that whole thing, that's not an easy game to play. It requires a lot of courage. It requires building a lot of character. It requires, uh, and these days, you know, because the, the dangers are much higher, it requires a much higher level of awareness. You gotta be smarter, better. You gotta play this game at a higher level than we did. But that doesn't mean you don't play. I think that if, uh, if I'm a young guy, hell, you've got this biological drive to be with a woman. You can't just like ignore that, you know? And porn is not a rational, reasonable uh, solution to this problem. Yeah, maybe you can take the edge off a little bit from time to time, but man, I cannot imagine having the sex drive of a guy between the ages of say 18 and I don't know, 30, and not having sex with a woman on a regular basis. I can't even imagine how hard that must be, how difficult that must be. Hard's probably not the right word to use there. We'll say how challenging that must be. That's just pure torture. It's just pure torture. So I don't think you need to torture yourself. I think you just need to play this game at a higher level. First of all, not all women are on OnlyFans. You know what I mean? They're not all doing porn. There are some really good women out there and they're really out there looking for good guys. And I think it's possible to have healthy marriages and relationships. There are men right now who are living a healthy relationship. And even in my own case where my marriage failed, there were some great times that we had. I mean, I had a lot of enjoyment, you know, being in that marriage for, for a period of time. And I have some wonderful kids and, um, I learned a lot, you know, I mean, you don't, you know, failure is not a, uh, it's not a destination. It, it's a process, you know, and you, you learn from it and you become better. It's not something that you are labeled with for the rest of your life. So if you try and you fail, well, fuck it, man, just get up and try again. You, you learn the lesson, you, you play the game better. You just get back in and you do it again. Um, you can't give up before you even play. You can't give up before you even try. I guess that's sort of my, my point here. When we're children, we're raised by women. And so it stands to reason that men are always seeking out the approval of women. We were raised by mothers, and if you get mom's attention, 
It was a good thing. You went to school, you had teachers, most of them were women. If you could win their favor, get their blessing, you did better. You got good grades. Life was easier. So when you get to be an adult, it makes a lot of sense that uh, seeking out the approval of women is uh, what we've been trained to do all our lives. So that's what a lot of men do. However, I would suggest that the sign of maturity in a man is when he no longer seeks the approval of a woman. I think once you get to that level where seeking the approval of a woman is not required for your state of mind, your happiness, your equilibrium in life, whatever it is, then you will have fully grown into your masculinity. Everybody matures at different rates. And I'm not shaming anyone. I'm not saying some guys are better than others or anything like that. I'm just suggesting that that's the path that we're all on. Now you cannot achieve that level of masculine maturity unless you have actually been on the field of play. Like you can't earn that stripe by just saying, I'm just going to stay home, play video games and play with myself um, for the rest of my life. No, you're just ignoring it. You're, you're not dealing with it. You're not actually growing as a human being. You're avoiding the whole situation. I don't think that is a healthy way to approach that issue in your life. You need to master this. And it's not easy. It's going to require a lot of practice. And even when you think you've got it down pretty good, you're still going to struggle with it at times. Because emotions and relationships and the whole psychology of it is tough. There's, there, that's what life is. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. You can't just opt out. You know Why, are, why the hell are you here if you're not going to actually live it? Because if you're not going to live it, you're just opting out. You're just, I don't know. It's like you got all the tools to play the game, but you're sitting on the bench because you're, you're afraid to get on the field. That's what it feels like to me. I, much, I have a much greater respect for any man who gets out there and, and crashes and burns than a guy who won't get out there and, and actually um, do it. He won't actually go out there and meet some women and put his, light, put his, put his honor, his dignity, his whatever on the line and, and really start to understand what this whole thing is about and to, and to grow and to become a better version of himself. Um, and I'm not talking about all this alpha shit, you know. I see some of these guys who claim to be alpha online and they crack me up because they, they're self-declared alpha, you know. If you've ever played on a sports team, there's a guy in most teams who is clearly the alpha. He's clearly the best player. He's the most talented guy. He works harder. He's the leader. He win he, he's the guy that helps you win games. He's the one that everyone turns to when the game is on the line. That's the alpha. No one, he, he doesn't tell anyone that he's the alpha. We, as a team, made him the alpha because it was clear he was leading us where we wanted to go. I have been blessed to have friends who were real alphas. Guys that were not just alphas in our little social group, but they were alphas on a much larger scale. They were better looking, they were smart, they were charismatic, they were athletic. You know, they just, they just had it all. They just had it all going on. These guys were not assholes, not at all. In fact, these were the guys that had your back. These are the guys that you counted on when things went sideways. Now, oftentimes, they led us into those situations <laughs> where things went sideways. So it just makes sense they would lead us out of it. But, uh, yeah, when you're with guys like that, yeah, there's no shame involved. You know what I mean? Like, nobody, nobody has any uh, feeling of uh, being less than. Everybody's working together you know, to have a good time or whatever, playing on the same team, you know. A lot of these alpha, self-declared alpha guys that I see on uh, social media, they seem to be trying to separate themselves from everybody else. And uh, yeah, that's not, that's not the way alphas operate. 
Now, alphas lead by example, um, and they don't, uh, they don't shame people, you know? All right, you guys, that's all I got for you. I certainly hope this has been an interesting video. And for you young guys, you know, get out there and get in the game. Do not play this from the, from the stands. You need to get out there and actually meet some women. Do it the real way. You know, be cautious. Play the game smart. Don't be an idiot. But play just the same. You got to get out there and do it. Um, I guarantee you, you'll have fun. You'll grow. You'll have some great stories to tell. And, uh, and we'll all be better for it. You know, we'll all be better for it. All right, thanks very much for watching. Remember, stay healthy, and if you can, stay single.